Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is a continuation of the saw videos. Hang on, there's lots more to come. I don't know anything about this saw other than it's filed crosscut and somebody was brave as hell if they were going to use this as a crosscut saw. It's 16th per inch. Nope. I always misread that. This one's five teeth per inch. The blade is heavy as hell. Uh, I don't know how thick it is. I've never really measured it, but it's a lot thicker than most of the saws that I have. It has this nice steel plate on it. And only three screws, but it's an old, old, old saw. Not just because it's all rusty. I mean, some of the new ones look rusty. Actually, some of the new ones look worse than this one. But it's, a, it's an old saw, and the blade is straight, and it's got an aggressive amount of teeth in it. I don't know why they filed it cross-cut at five teeth per inch. I mean, that's a huge tooth. It has the nib on the end. Uh, I'm going to clean this one up just because I think it's a neat saw. But I don't need it, so it's way down the stack on the things that... Th on the list of things to do. Heavy. Twice as heavy as any of the other saw up there. This is a Diston. This one's probably out of the 50s. You can kind of tell by the handle. It's, it's more blocked off and it doesn't have the engraving in it. It's a good saw blade. Straight Takes a good bend, still comes back straight again. So it's a good saw blade. It's back when Diston was still making good saws. They make them now, but they're not very good. This is a Diston. It's a Keystone Challenger. One of those inexpensive saws, and the handles are always loose on them. Doesn't really stop the saw from working, but it just feels bad. This is a Rockwell saw. Now, I had this saw for a long, long time. It's one that I got from my grandfather. Grandpa liked to go to uh, Shipshawana. He lived in Sturgis, Michigan, which is just down the road from Shipshawana. And he liked to go down there for the auctions. And he bought, kind of like me actually, he bought old stuff. And some of it he fixed up. Mostly he just kind of brushed off the dirt and painted it. This one didn't get painted. When I first started trying to sharpen saws, I was living in Union City and I had never sharpened a saw before. I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll have a professional do some saws, and then I can see how he did it and have something to show me what a good saw is supposed to be. So I went down to the local lumber yard, and they had a rack where a guy would bring saws that he had bought and sharpened and hung on the rack. You could buy one of those, or you could fill out a tag, hang your saw on the rack, and he would bring it back sharpened. Well, he brought it back with one, two, three, four, five teeth missing. Six teeth missing. There's one missing out here. I said, okay, no more professional sharpening. He got three of my saws. One of them came back semi-decent. The rest of them looked like this one. It's unfortunate. Uh, the guy actually did circular saw blades and did a fine job on circular saws. Just not very good on hand saws. He was trying for too much set on them. This one is set with about a 10,000 set, which is too much for this little short tooth. I don't know how many teeth per inch it is. It's probably around eight or so. And you really only need about five thousandths of set on any of the, any of the uh, teeth on this blade because you're really only trying to make the, the hole, the kerf, big enough for the blade to slip down through. And if you go much more than five thousandths, you're making the hole bigger than, bigger than the uh, blade by ten thousandths 
or more, you're starting to just saw wood for the joy and pleasure of sawing wood. You're, you're losing wood out of the, the part that you paid money to get the piece of wood to start with. And also, it tends to overbend the teeth. The other thing he did is he tried to bend the tooth at the base. You want to bend the tip of the tooth, not the base of the tooth. Just the tip and not crank it over a whole lot. Saw still cuts good. I've never sharpened it after I got it back from him. It's, it has cut well. This Rockwell blade is hard as the Dickens too. Probably one of the reasons it broke for him. But when he snapped off the teeth, that got me to thinking maybe I should be doing my own saws. This is a distant. Uh, can't tell the etch is gone and don't know how many teeth it is. It's probably close to eight teeth per inch. Uh, final cross cut. Baker owned this saw. You can tell because Baker put his name in there big enough you can see it a hundred feet away. Baker probably had a few people borrow his saw and not bring it back. I don't know who made this saw. I can't read the etch and I can't read the medallion. And it's in a really rough shape. Rusty as the Dickens. This is one of the early ones that I got just because I was buying saws. And as kind of an explanation for that, quite often the saws were grouped together in bundles and I might get a decent saw and pay 20 bucks for a bundle and get two or three good blades out of it and have two or three really crappy ones like this one. I might be able to bring this one back. It is fairly straight. The teeth look to be fairly good. Somebody filed this that had absolutely no idea what they were doing. This is another one that's a warranted superior. Uh, can't read the etch. The toe on it is, is pretty secure, the blade's straight. It's worthwhile fixing, but it's going to be way down the stack. This one. I'm pretty sure I got this one just because it came as part of a bundle because it's got broken teeth on it. The only way to fix broken teeth is to either chop them all off, which you can do. Someday I'll have to show you how the retoother works as soon as I get it running. It's a long story about how I got it, but I have one. But to take care of a broken tooth, you either have to go through and file all the teeth off and then recut new teeth on it or you have to sharpen it enough so that the, the broken tooth gradually goes away. This one only has two or three missing teeth but they're right here in the middle where you're going to do most of your cutting. If I had to make a guess at it I'd say it's five and a half points per inch but it's not a stock standard thing. It's in the rack. It'll eventually get sharpened but not today. This is an old Distin. It's bad guys when you have enough saws that you've lost track of what you have. I believe this is a D8. It's an early D8. It's missing a couple of nuts. The blade is straight. The teeth look to be pretty good. It still has the nib on it, and the hand and the toad is in good shape. So this one will definitely get redone, but I don't need it right now, so it's going to be a while before I get to it. This is a Franken blade. It's a distant saw blade, but the handle came out of a stack of junk. Uh, it was just a handle by itself. 
it's held together with a nail and some hope. Uh, it's split down the middle and it has one bolt in it. I put a handle on it because I thought the blade was cool. I'm not really sure where I got the blade from. It's been so long ago I forgot. Some of you expressed an interest in how I made the saw till. And it's not fancy. I got the idea from looking at a picture of a display in a store. I'm not sure who made the original one, but what I did is I took a piece of 1x3 and I drilled a 3 quarter inch hole in it, in from the side, and then I put a hole straight down into it from the top. That way, the peg on the end of this goes up into that little hole, just like so. First time I put it up, I had a dickens of a time, trying to line everything all up. So I'm going to show you the cheap way to do it. While I'm at it, I'm going to get these out of the way because they were up there and I just never got to them because I put up the saw till and haven't been back at it. I wanted to have the holes for the till set to line up with the holes in the pegboard. Let's see, I have to line it up there. Can't have it against that one because that one's in the way of one of the support boards. And I threw the holes over on that line right there. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have this lined up into the pegboard. That way I can just tip the board over the top. Set it into the holes. then you just set your saws up there. Now I put this hook up there just so that the saws didn't get knocked off the thing when I was putting saws on and off. 
but I don't think that's a necessity. It was just something I did because I overloaded it. If you look right here, the pegboard is torn out. I originally only had two holes in it, and I didn't have this center one. I put enough saws on there, and one night I was sitting there watching television upstairs, and I heard crash. I came downstairs, and all my saws were laying on the bench. It had torn that hanger right out, and all the saws fall. It had torn that hanger right out, and all the saws fell on the bench. Fortunately, no damage. But the next time I got down here in the shop, I put another hanger on it. Now, these don't go up here in any particular order. The only thing I try and do is put my two good saws next to each other because I get those out of here quite a bit. So there, that's all my saws. Well, no, that's not really true. If you have any questions about today's video or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop me a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.